I've been reading as much as I can about the North Pole and how to survive up there and found this book. It's 30 Years in the Golden North. It's written by Jan Welsel. And Jan Welsel spent 30 years up near the North Pole uh, in the early 1900s or 1800s because this book was uh, published in 1932. Born in 1868, died in 1948, and he was even an Eskimo chief. But based on his conversations with some of these guys, they got it into a book, and that's called 30 Years in the Golden North. But he also had a bunch of other texts, and he did various lectures and uh, told about his his time at the uh, up at the North Pole. Here's a picture of him. So he definitely existed, although for a long time his uh, people even doubted that, that he was a real man. But an interesting book here, 30 Years in the Golden North. I I haven't read the entire thing. Take note of the obvious uh, square and compass symbolism right here from the publishing company. But uh, 30 Years in the Golden North, but a lot of interesting information about the far north, Siberia, and Eskimos. He, uh, of course, crossed over the Bering Strait into the Inuits area. And this one is a small tell from the far, far north. And it's about this guy's travels. No one knows for sure whether the hero of this book really existed, but I believe he did. His name was Jan Welzel, and he was the folk hero in my native Czechoslovakia. When I was growing up, his tales and breathtaking Arctic journeys inspired me and countless others to dream of similar adventures. He traveled without a map, adjusting his route according to information he picked up along the way. And when he reached a river, there was no, if there was no bridge, he would build a raft to get him and his horse across. When he got closer to the polar region, he traded his horse for reindeer and a sled. And like Robinson Crusoe, he met every obstacle and problem with a solution. And after three long winters, he reached the Bering Sea and St. Lawrence Island. Here is a fragment of Jan Wesel's story. Is it a tall tale? I have my doubts. Let's see what it says. Oh, misery, there must be a better life than this. I'm going to find it. So Jan Wesel, as a boy, is not happy with society, and he's taking off to the North Pole. I could sure relate to that. I have bought a horse and a cart, tools and hunting gear, food and provisions, and I am heading for the far north. Once again, this is exactly what I've just finished, except I don't have a horse. I have a sled. But here he is leaving from his area here and following the path to the northeast up into Siberia. And quite a cool book. I thought at first there was a cipher up here, but it's his uh, inventory of everything he took with him. So he brought one cart and two axes, and he's got one shovel, all these different uh, items cataloged. And looks like he's gone past Babylon, and he is uh, in the area of the Tartarians, more or less, and getting closer and closer to the uh, Bering Strait, which is right here, and then of course, up into the Arctic and the North Pole. I'm heading for the far north. And he had to trade his dear horse for a reindeer and a sled, and it was a tearful goodbye. And this one, you know, all kinds of uh, small, intricate details and drawings explaining some of the events of the story as he uh, finds a cave and makes a good home. And he might have gone too far north because he expected to find Eskimos here, but... Haven't seen another living soul, and he's very much alone. One day while checking my traps, I see a strange glow on the horizon, and I think I found gold, so I go eagerly towards it. And all of a sudden, I'm flying, and I end up stuck to the mountain with my sled, my traps, and all my belongings. Only now do I remember the stories about the magnetic stone, said to be some sort of a meteorite. You have to heat it with a bonfire to break its magnetic power, but I am alone, hanging head down under my traps and gun, getting colder and colder. A great drowsiness comes over me, and the Eskimos rescue him. They they come pull him off of the magnetic rock and get him down into the cave where the shaman is at. And the Eskimos surround me with a trusting friendliness. I've never met such a kind people as the Inuit, and they are teaching me everything they know, and I'm learning how to live in the harsh climate. And what did you know it, but here comes the gold rush and then and the people looking for gold i've seen that the eskimos live in harmony with their surroundings but i fear for them for they are very trusting of strangers and the strangers are coming with their guns and uh 
going to cause some problems. So he says, what can I do to leave my friends in peace? The glowing golden mountain. I shall show them the way. And they think it's gold, so off they go. Jan Wessel stayed for in the Arctic for 30 years, traveling throughout Alaska, northern Canada, and Siberia. At some point, Wessel and his friends, including the Eskimos or the Inuit, started a trading company. Though I could not fully comprehend when I was young the Arctic world his books described, I could well imagine it and never doubted for a minute all of the adventures took place. And this being one of them, that Jan the Eskimo Wessel, uh, who spent 30 years north the North Pole, said that he found the magnetic mountain near the North Pole. And his gravestone is in Dawson in the Yukon Territory, bearing the name Jan Wetzel on the date of his death in 1951. He was born on August 15th, 1868. And that is the very quick summary of Jan the Eskimo Wetzel's story. Uh, definitely a real man, but whether or not he found the magnetic mountain of the north i don't know 